My name is Donna Moore, and I'm here at beautiful Winter Park, Florida, at a Chateau Kitchen. A Chateau Kitchen is a licensed commissary where about 20 small businesses make their food products to either wholesale, retail, or sell at area farmers markets. We have about 20 businesses that manufacture everything from ice cream to cakes to cookies to chocolates, shortbreads, goodness, we make it all, fabulous sauces. And we want to thank Signature Chefs of Orlando for featuring some of our wonderful chefs on their program. Thank you so much. Hi, welcome to Signature Chefs of Orlando. My name is Kathy Belosa. I own Kathy's Cajun Cuisines, is a gourmet jams, jellies, relishes, and pickled vegetables company. Today we are making some jalapeno jelly. Take in the vinegar and the sugar and have heated it to a boil. You can see it's rapidly boiling. I have a half cup of jalapeno peppers that have been minced, three fourths of a cup of bell peppers that also have been minced. And I'm gonna add this to the hot vinegar and sugar brine. Don't be alarmed when you're boiling the vinegar and the sugar and it starts to tickle your nose. Okay, now this has to come back up to a boil and you can see it's already starting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add pectin to the jelly. Pectin is a gelling agent made from apples. This is in a liquid form. There are powdered forms as well, um, but this jelly requires the liquid. It will have a faster set time. You can let it boil up a little bit. It's going to rise as it's boiling. Um, you'll see some discoloration, and that discoloration is actually the little membrane parts of the jalapeno peppers and the bell peppers that creates a foam. If you have too much foam develop, you can skim it off, and you can see how it's rising rapidly. It makes a white look, and that white this white look right here is from the sugar, the residue of the sugars and it is boiling nicely. This jelly, because it, it has to hit that boiling state, will be extremely hot. Caution when you are stirring it, when you are pouring it into the jars particularly, and anytime handling it. So this is gonna boil for two minutes, and in the meantime, we're gonna prepare the pectin. Scissors, cut. Okay, it's prepared. All right, I'm gonna lower the temperature just a tad and pour in the pectin. At the, with the pectin hits the hot mixture, it will slow down the boiling process for momentarily. Squeeze it all out. Oh yes, nice. Now the color is a little dull for me, so I wanna add a little zip, and I'm gonna put a couple of drops of food coloring in there, green food coloring. Let this boil for one more minute. It does affect your sinuses with the jalapenos. You can always substitute any hot pepper that you like in a pepper jelly. Just know that the hotter the pepper, the harder it will be to breathe. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off of the, the fire. I'm just gonna move it over to the side so I have a little workspace. One, two, three. Stir it back up. It's gonna give it a nice little clear green hue. You want it darker, add more food coloring. Uh, this should give it um, probably a seafoam green color. We take regular eight ounce jars and we're gonna put them into our hot canner. Our canner has boiling water that's um, 320 degrees or higher, 360, 320. You wanna put 
hot liquid into hot jars. So we'll add our jars to our canner. Use the tongs for safety. The water is unforgiving, so just be careful. Now I have some jars in here that I prepped from before. You can see they're steaming hot. And we're going to add the liquid to these jars. Okay, one more stir. The settlement of the foaminess from the membrane settles on top, so you just stir it back up, mix it back in, and it disappears. Okay, you can see there's chunks in there, and it's just going to pour into the jar. And fill it up. You want to fill it up to about one eighth of an inch to the top. If you overfill it, it's going to create um, issues when you're processing it for sealing. All right. You can see the chunks, and you can see that the the particles of the peppers rose to the top. Now when it goes back into the canner, they will be evenly distributed. And if not, you turn it upside down when, they take, when you take it out of the canner um, before it cools and the, the bits of the pieces will be a little bit more dis distributed evenly. Okay, so we need a, a wet paper towel and um, you can easily use the water from your canner but again, it is unforgiving, so just be careful. Know that it is very hot. Wipe the tops and the sides, and that towel will get hot. Now the jar itself is extremely hot now um, because the jelly was at a boiling state. So I'm gonna want to use a little put bit more protection when I'm sealing them, when I'm putting the bands on. Okay, so we have lids that need to go into the canner to warm up the sealing gasket. Okay, those don't need to stay in very long. We are gonna take our handy dandy lid catcher and pull them back out and seal them. See if we can get a double. Yeah, we got a double. Makes it go by a little bit quicker. Okay. And the bands. You need your bands. Now, when sealing the jars, don't put them on too tight but don't put it on too loose. If it's too tight, the air will not be able to be released. And if it's too loose, you'll lose air and product. And it's hot. Grasp it with something, there we go. Okay, now we're gonna put these jars into the canner for 10 minutes for the sealing process. Now after 10 minutes, we're gonna take them out and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna, how you can present your jelly for an appetizer or actually a dessert. Okay, so 10 minutes have passed and our jams are ready to come out of the, the canner. We're gonna take your jar lifter again. You can see how the jam is still in a liquid state and that the particles of the peppers are, have distributed evenly. So we'll put those on the side. And if they don't distribute, we're gonna turn it upside down and make them distribute. There's no, there's no problems with this. The only problem you ever have in making jam is when you break a jar after all that hard work. See, we're gonna make them distribute evenly. I like the chunkiness of the particles of the peppers. You know, it gives it a little bit more substance. And we'll make them distribute 
turn it upside down, and they go back to the top. There we go. And then when it cools, they'll be evenly distributed. Okay, so I make the jams and jellies, but where do I sell them? What do I do with them? I started off years ago when I first started with jalapeno pepper jelly, and I just made it and gave it away. Then I started at different craft shows, special events. Now in Oviedo, Florida, there's a local farmer's market. It's called the Oviedo Farmer's Market, first Saturday of each month, and I sell my products there. I sell my products at different other farmer's markets, special events, and you can all be found on my website at kathyscajuncuisines.com. I have a schedule on my website and it tells you where I am, where you can find me, and how you can get these delicious, tasty products. So now we're gonna go ahead and put together some fabulous flavors with our jalapeno jelly. Traditional is over cream cheese. So we'll take this one that's already prepared and cooled so it's in a gelling state already. This is our finished product and you just distribute it over the, the cream cheese. Now if it's a little looser, fine, because it will um, fall over the sides. This one's a little firmer. So you just top it with the cream cheese, uh, top the cream cheese with the jalapeno pepper jelly. And then we'll start with some biscuits. Breakfast, start your morning off with some zip. I do have some customers who take the, my, I have a habanero pepper jelly, and they have that with their peanut butter on their, on their bagels. I am not kidding you. So you take your biscuits, freshly baked biscuits, and top it with some jalapeno pepper jelly. Or of course you could use any of my other line of products. I have some called strawberries dipped in champagne jam. I have um, summer berry splash, which is a combination of three different berries, blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry, with a little berry vodka in it. I seem to like to use alcohol in my jams. Alcohol used in a jam is not a problem because jam has to come to a boiling state and at a boiling state, the alcohol is burned off. So you just have the flavor. So don't be concerned about any alcohol that's in your jam. Okay, this pepper jelly is the one we, we just made, so it has not gelled yet. It's still very hot, so we, we're, it would be a little thicker, but if you warmed it up, it's called syrup. Okay, so we've plated up some biscuits with our jalapeno jelly, and the next one, we're gonna try something new. We're gonna try some ice cream with jalapeno jelly. All right, one more. Get a good scoop in there. All right. Okay, so we're gonna to top it with the more firm jelly because I don't want it to melt too much. Okay. All right. And let's see, this one we set in the refrigerator, so it has firmed up nicely. If you want a quick set, take the jalapeno jelly, put it in a bowl, and you can do a quick set by putting it in the refrigerator. This was in the refrigerator for 10 minutes, and you can see it's pretty set. It's a good gel state. So let's add some more jalapeno jelly to our ice cream. Nice. All right. And it's always best topped with a cherry. I'm Kathy Belosa with Kathy's Cajun Cuisines. And thank you to Signature Chefs of Orlando for allowing me to be part of your segment. Thank you. Have a great day.